their name. And in those, I've got drawing files and model files, which is great. I would also appreciate it if the printouts of your homework too would form a stack somewhere up here. That way I can actually get those graded. I, as I said, will save all of the homework to submissions electronically and will check them if I need to, but I'm hoping that everything on paper is, is sufficient. While you're up there, there is a 26373 Lab 3 Mold Flow 1 folder, and inside it, what we're really going to need are the three files, the rotor, the rotor clean, and the rotor dirty. But you can grab the whole folder because if for some reason we get behind or your computer crashes, I've already done the analyses that we're going to be doing today. That way you can take a look at them and say, ah, that's what we're supposed to get. Okay? So grab the whole thing, although we're probably only going to use about three of the files. Feel free to open up SolidWorks and to open up Moldflow. We're going to be using both of those today. So there's Moldflow Plastics Insight, which is designed for engineers, and there's Moldflow Plastics Advisors, which is designed for technicians, processing guys who are out on the floor, and uh, people who actually have a very small pocketbook. So, the difference in price is only about $90,000. <laughs> or at least it used to be. It used to be that a full-blown seat of Moldflow went for about 100 k You buy it, and then you pay maintenance to keep it updated, and the maintenance would be about 10000 a year to 15000 a year to keep the latest releases and all that. But regardless, they're changing that as they've gotten bought out by Autodesk. So how they're, their pricing is different now. Where you guys should be at on your project very quickly is that you should have at this point as a group met a couple of times since you've submitted the project idea and somebody or some group of people should be modeling it in SolidWorks. You should have some sort of a idea of here's what it's starting to look like. Now obviously your idea is going to change and morph and go through multiple revisions but you're going to have to do mold flow analyses along the way to see whether or not your idea is feasible. I'm not going to spend any more time in this class talking about, and Iliad, you're more than welcome to stay. Okay, I'm not trying to chase people out. That, that's fair. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot more time in this class talking about how to model your individual parts, the individual ideas. We are going to spend a fair amount of time talking about how to model molds, but I think it's more important that we spend the next two weeks talking about mold flow and what should you look at, what shouldn't you look at, what types of things are problems and do we need to consider as we're doing a mold flow analysis. I know last year at the end of intro to design, for those of you that had it with me last year, we started working on mold flow a little bit. We brought in a model, we cleaned it up a little bit. You guys made fill time plots. Remember that? Some of you that, some nods, yes? Okay. There are a lot of other things other than just fill time that we want to take a look at. And that's sort of the goal today. And we're going to be doing work on this little fan rotor. And the reason that I chose it is, A, it's a relatively simple model, but it's going to show us a lot about how do we clean up models, how do we change models. What's up, Reed? Uh, 
Uh, Peter, you put your uh, phone book in my folder. Say that. I did? Yeah. Thanks for getting that straight now. I appreciate it. Everybody else, please double check that their homework is submitted correctly in their folder and not with extras. Okay? Does multiple not open? It just came up with an error for me. Yeah, mine says that the navigation. I don't really care if you can make it to the web page. Frankly, I care if we can get to the software. And we should have 25 or 30 licenses. Hmm. License manager troubleshooting. It might be that you're trying to hit it at the exact same time. So, Does everybody else have Multiflow open? seeing a lot of yeses and affirmatives, which is great. Okay. So, first thing first, in SolidWorks, I'm actually before I talk too much, everybody should have already grabbed this 26373 folder, and I need to reaffirm this. You should have put it somewhere on the computer that you're working on, so somewhere on the D drive. And I'm going to put it directly in the My MPI 6.2 Projects file. So on the D drive, you're going to see a folder that says My MPI 6.2 Projects. By default, that's where Moldflow is going to save your work. If you want Moldflow to crash a miserable and horrible death, all you have to do is try to work off of your network drive. So save your work on the Plastics public drive, open it up, and try to run Moldflow, and crash your computer. Everybody get it? When you're running Moldflow, you copy your work from the network drive onto the local hard drive, then you run the analyses, and when you're done, you copy it back. Otherwise, as Moldflow runs, it creates very, very large intermediate result files that actually get deleted at the end of the analysis. But it has to create these files in order to run because it's storing intermediate results and intermediate data. And every time it's writing those to and from the hard drive, it takes time. But if it's trying to write those across a network to a little hard drive on a computer that's somewhere in the third floor of that building, bad things. In SolidWorks now, we're going to take a look at the part. We're going to open it up. And I want to open up the rotor. I want to open up the SolidWorks rotor, not the STL rotor. There should be three files there. There should be one SOLIDWORKS file that looks like this, and then there should be a rotor clean and a rotor dirty, which are STL files, which I've saved off of this. So this particular file that I've got here, I want to tie in a little bit of last class with this class. Let's start out by talking about the parting line. Can this part be molded in a two-plate cold runner mold? Does it have undercuts? How many, just show of hands, how many people without doing the undercut analysis say it has undercuts? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, almost everybody is saying yes. How many people say no, it, I think this is a two-plate cold runner mold application? Which way does the mold open? Don. Does it open from the top of the blade? So, like out of the screen this way. Out of the screen this way, so normal to that surface. Yeah. Everyone sees this arrow? Open and up? There's no undercuts. If it opens that way. 
there would be no undercuts. Let's prove it. Let's do an undercut analysis and click that surface. Interesting mold, yes? We're going to come back and we're going to use this a couple of times through the semester when we're talking about parting lines and parting surfaces and how to generate them. But this is what I would consider for the rotor a good, clean, solid model that's ready to go on to the next step of the project. When you look at it, it clearly defines an A side and a B side. We don't have any issues. Now, in order to get this geometry, it was kind of tricky. Because if you look straight down on it, the top of each blade is going to be made on the cavity side. And the bottom of each blade is going to be made on the core side. Everyone sees it? But then, if you look between the blades, we have to be making this blue on the cavity, and then we have to make this blue on the cavity. So we're going to connect down this edge. So you can think that this whole area here is going to be made of one piece of material that comes up, and then this area is going to be made on another piece of material that comes down, and they're co it's kind of going to interlock like fingers. Do you guys see that as it comes around? Sort of interlocking like fingers, where each blade is made in between one set. So this might be a great solid model in terms of draft analysis and drafting. The question is whether or not it's a great model for mold flow. Because we want to take this model in, and now we want to figure out where our gate location is, and does this model fill or not. So I've already saved it out for you guys. Let's go open up mold flow. When you start mold flow, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a new project. If you hit new project, it's going to bring up a create new project dialog box. Notice that it defaults to the My MPI 6.2 Projects folder. <coughs> Let's browse into that and grab our folder that we dropped into there. And then let's create a new project name. I'm very conveniently calling it Lab 1 since I'm going to do this three times today. So we're supposed to drop that Lab 3 folder into... I did. If you didn't, understand that whatever you directed at there is where it gets saved and it defaults to the D drive, the MyMPI 6.2. And that under no condition should that be the network drive. Or a jump drive. Or an external hard drive. used to be that people had rewritable CDs, and I had to explain to people why they couldn't run mold flow off of a rewritable CD, but <laughs> everybody got that? I don't care. Project Lab Awesome. Project Lab Awesome. That works. Now, we're going to import our STL. So this little button up at the top is import, or you can go file, import. Do people remember how to export an STL file? Should I go over that? SolidWorks. Yeah, from SolidWorks. That's about. I know what you did. Okay, guys, I apologize. Let's go export this as an STL and then bring it in. That way, you all remember how to do that. I assumed that you did. So let's jump back to SolidWorks. Sorry for the uh, the forward and backward. To save it out as an STL, come into File, Save As. Do not just hit Save. Come down to the Save As Type down drop and select STL. Now, as soon as you select STL, you notice that underneath it we get an Options button. And it's important to click on that Options 
for two reasons. 